Hi, my name is Andrew Kim, um, also known as Andrew in game. I'm, I'm the player manager for NYXO. I was born in Oakland, um, California. My dad worked here in America, in LA, and my mom was in Korea, so I, I moved a lot, like back and forth. Pretty much half of my, of my life was in LA, and the other half was in Korea. So I just kind of like adapted, I guess. Um, if anything, it helped me because of my moving back and forth so much. Um, now I'm fluent in Korean and English. But yeah, when I was young, I you know, wish I would stay at one place because I would make friends and I have to like, you know, go to another school and make new friends and that would kind of repeat like a lot. So my dad is a professor um, in LA and my mom is like a freelance translator who works in Korea. I, I kind of learned like the cultural differences like naturally, I guess. So what happened was I went to, uh, I came here on, when I was third grade and I just started going to school. Like no one taught me like how to speak English or how to act um, in front of like American friends. It was a little hard at first, but after I like learned the culture, um, it was I quickly made a lot of friends here. So I went to a boarding school since sixth grade. So pretty much the whole middle school and high school and, and college, of course, um, I was like uh, living outside of my parents' house. Like the reason was because like my dad and my mom had to split time between you know like raising me, right? Because they're in separate countries. So I will be in America for a couple of years, and then I'll be going to Korea for a couple of years to stay with my mom. And since I lived in LA uh, and graduated elementary school in LA, parents wanted me to go to international school in Korea, but um, there was none around my house in Korea, <clears throat> so I had to go to boarding school. I think me going to boarding school made me mature uh, like a lot faster than most other people because I was living with my friends 24/7, um, pretty much. So. Before I went to my middle school, I was a, like a really shy kid. But because I met like a lot of good friends in my middle school, I think yeah, I, I kind of grew a lot in terms of like social life. My parents never really like pushed me into like academics or anything that I didn't want to do. Uh, ultimately, they wanted me to like go to college, um, like graduate with a good diploma, get a good like safe job. And other than that, like academics, um, like I, yeah, I wasn't a good student at first, so of course I struggled. Um, I was like. The first two years, I was barely passing by with like a 2.0 GPA. And after that, I just couldn't like keep up. And I was like failing classes. And so I just dropped out of college. I first heard about video games when my uncle like brought his like Nintendo when I was like, like maybe five or six years old. Yeah, I still remember like the first time playing video games. Like it was really cool. Like I played Super Mario World. That was my first video game I played. When I was young, I was fortunate enough to have like a desktop a computer in my house. But back then, like internet wasn't like common as it is now, so I couldn't play a lot of online games. But I play a lot of single player games. When I entered middle school around like 2000, early 2000s, that's when like in Korea there was like a huge boom about StarCraft and internet connections. Obviously, I was exposed to like StarCraft. All, all my friends were playing it, so I, I played with them. But like me being in a uh, boarding school, like most middle school and high school that I went to, um, they actually blocked uh, all online games. I actually couldn't play any video games for about like maybe seven, eight years. When I went to college, I had the freedom to play video games. I think in 2014, 2014, um, a game called Heroes of the Storm came out. I got really into it. I got pretty much addicted. And I came to a point where like I was playing 12, 14 hours a day. Like at first I was really, I was not good at all. Like I was really bad. Play like in, in Overwatch, uh, I would be like bronze. I liked like getting better. Like, I like working on myself, working hard to get better, and I got a lot of enjoyment out of that. So when Overwatch came out, and I gave it a try, and I actually fell in love with uh, Overwatch. Uh, while I was like uh, in my journey of like getting better at Overwatch, um, I found a video on, on YouTube about like Overwatch guys, and that those videos were by Wizard Hyung, um, our coach at Nuno XL, and he had like a Discord channel, so I joined his Discord channel. And one day, Wizard Hyung like asked um, like everyone in the Discord channel, "I'm looking for a personal assistant." I saw that and I was like, "This is the opportunity that I need, and I, I'm gonna all in on this." So at that time, I was like, I was jobless. I was living in my like dad's house, like <laughs> getting my like, allowance from him like once in a while, and like I was really like pretty like low place in my life. So I decided like this is what I want to do. Um, this is the opportunity that I have, so I'm gonna like give it my give my best. Uh, Wizard asked me to do like some like favors, like little favors here and there. And then um, after he saw that I could do like small favors, he asked me like bigger favors. So like analyzing opponents, um, collecting data, stuff like that. Um, so I, I helped him maybe three four months, pretty much every day, at least like eight hours a day. Yeah, after three or four months of doing that, 
Wizard got an opportunity for me um, as a translator for a team called Selfless, which was an NA team um, back then. Obviously, I, I, that was a really good opportunity for me. I took the job right away, and that was like the first real esports experience I got. But sadly, um, Selfless uh, disbanded um, after like two months after I was there. I was there. So obviously, I, I, would need, I need a place, I need a job. Um, and luckily, Wizard Young um, still liked me um, after uh, me working for Selfless. And he asked me, do I want to join LW, which was LW back then. So he asked me, do you want to join LW? And I was like, of course. And Director G of LW allowed me to go there and uh, work as an assistant coach of Wizard Young. Yeah, so that was the like, second job I got, uh, second gig um, in esports. Yeah, so I was in LW and then you know, New York came and uh, we became New York Excelsior. And that's why I'm here. Uh, generally, like a player manager, uh, his or her role will be like to take care of things outside of the game. So coaches, um, like players play the game obviously, coaches coach the players about in-game stuff, but there's like a bunch of stuff to do like outside of the game, right? So um, I take care of like um, a lot of things outside of the game. Like small things from like taking out the trash to like translating for players for interviews. Like if players want to go to hospital, like they can't speak English, so I have to go with them. And like I have to take them to everyone to DMV so they can get like an ID card. There's like a barrier between coach and the player. Our coaches are really close to like all the players, but at the same time, like there's a still a barrier between them. Um, that barrier is like a little thinner with me and the player. So if players have any like internal, like personal issues, they come to me and to talk about it. Out of the game stuff, not in game stuff. Like my philosophy is like I don't I don't like to be like strict. Um, like I like to let my like let the players do like what they want, as long as it's not like you know like bad or like illegal or anything like that, like I let them do what they want and hopefully they'll learn from the experience and instead of me like kind of scolding them, they'll learn through experience. That, that's kind of my like style, like, I guess. It's been like a huge pleasure for me to work for NYXL just because like everyone in our company, like Rohit, Farzam, Scott, um, they're all really like really nice people and they like, they give us all our freedom, a lot of freedom and they trust us. I mean, yeah, it's been a huge, huge uh, pleasure to work for them. And obviously, the, we have, I think we have the best fans. Like, every time I watch the video about um, the Five Deadly Venoms cheering us on um, during our games, I get like, like butterflies in my stomach. Like, I get really, I feel really good about that. So, yeah, um, I love our fans. We have the best fans in the world. My ultimate goal is to make sure like the players are happy and the coaches are happy. If you ask me like my, my goal is like 50 years from now on, it'd be like owning a team. But for now, I like the management role, so maybe next goal will be like a, become a general manager or like an assistant general manager, something like that. When I first decided that I wanted an esports job, I actually had no idea how to get a job, esports job. I, I didn't know anybody in esports. I didn't know like you know any player in esports. I didn't know any coaches. But just my passion of just wanting an esports job like made me like look for a job every day, all day. At first, I didn't want to like I didn't believe myself that I could get an esports job, but. You know, like I got an opportunity, and if you really want a job, a certain job, if you actually like try your best to get it, you can actually get it. Like nothing is impossible.